Welcome to the realm of Solitaire, a vast dragon skull shaped continent with massive mountains to the north and densely populated cities to the south, a land twisted with thorny bramble that seemed to snag and prick at all its natural and artificial inhabitants. On the westernmost portion of the region is a miner's town called the Salentium Dig Site. The atmosphere of the town had a granular texture and felt coarse as the people breathed it in. The people who lived there were as rough as the dried dirt roads that carved pathways between their scattered wooden houses. There really wasn't much order to the land other than the guards who didn't really care about what happened, as long as there weren't any major uprisings or revolts. There was this feeling about the place, like something had died many years ago, and now the barren twigged trees that stood in the dried sandy dirt were just skeletons of what once was a beautiful sight. On the opposite end of the map, across the Untamed Channel, you'll find what used to be known as Nymph's Island, a land mostly rumored to be the home of the last dragon. According to Voxelentium history, not much is known about Nymph's Island, other than it's where nymphs came from. There were rumors of a great tree that stood tall in the center of the island, and if you have a telescope, you could see it peeking above all the other trees from the shoreline. Other than that, not much is known about the island. To the north, across Division Strait, although it's not labeled because no one can seem to agree on what to call the forest, is what most people refer to as Rookswood. Crawling with unscrupulous and lawless individuals, Rookswood is a forest not many dare to venture. The trees of the woods were unnatural in the way they grew, and from afar looked more like a tangled briar patch than a forest. It was said long ago the fairies attacked a ship carrying thousands of foreign potions, and when the ship sank, the potions bled into the land of the woods, causing the trees to warp and twist in strange ways. And lastly, to the southeast is the Kingdom of Xanderfell, a city encased within tall black stone walls covered in a thick bramble with poisonous thorns and fruits. The innards of the city were compact with tall red brick cottages stacked one on top of the other. It was divided into three main sections. The deck, home to the rich folk of the kingdom, the bottom deck, everything that existed outside of the deck's golden gated community, and the congeal market, a place where the rich and poor intermingled for goods. The city at its core was home to the royal castle of cards known as the Voxelentium, a group of four families whose names just so happened to align with card suits. In fact, they influenced the current name of the realm. Prior to their rule, the realm was known as the Realm of Solitude, given the continent was dead center of the world's largest ocean. The realm wasn't only known for its playing card theme. It was also renowned for the wide variety of races who lived there. First were the humans. They were the founders of the Kingdom of Xanderfell, and were known for their ambitions and need to discover and innovate. While they only make up a moderate portion of the population, they somehow have maintained to be the most influential race in history, being the inventors of things like the quartzite engines, the quartzite electrical systems, and the radio network. Next were the nymphs. They were creatures who had a deep connection with the Earth. Unfortunately, due to poor historical record keeping, modern day nymphs don't know much about their true culture and lineage. They only know that at one point, they came from Nymph's Island and abandoned their deep-rooted connection with the Earth many millennia ago. In contrast to the nymphs were the fairies, who despite the Voxelentium trying to rid of their history and culture, have maintained their roots and knowledge of their ancestors. They're known to be stubborn, extremely sharp, and quick-witted people. Their wings come from fairies known as ink weavers. These fairies have long, pointed black fingertips that are as sharp as needles. With these needle-like fingertips, they tattoo wings onto the backs of newborn fairies, and once the fairies are old enough, the wings develop into full-blown wings that they can use to fly. And lastly, the smallest race and founders of the Voxelentium, the magician folk. These people consisted of wizards, sorcerers, necromancers, and prophets who had an array of all sorts of powers. Some could read minds, transform into objects and creatures, some even developed feathered wings and animal-like features reflecting what kind of magic they had. According to history, they came to help the humans of Xanderfell fight off the fairies and the nymphs in what is known as the Great Resource War. All they asked for in return was that they would hold positions of power within the government after the war was won. To this day, that promise has been kept. For the most part. In a land like this, be careful the cards you play. And don't forget, even if you lose, a well-shuffled deck never gives the same hand twice. Thus, welcome to the realm of Solitaire, a land riddled with rebellion, decked out with dictators, and plastered with divided people. A place where every card in the deck matters. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and don't forget to leave a like on your way out. I'm Azogloria, and I'll see you in the next chapter.